Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Wednesday, September the 4th. I've got my friend, Dr. C.B. Chastain with us. Good to have you here, C.B. You know, um, we all read and saw in the news and in the paper about uh, two or three weeks ago, five or six dogs that died because they were swimming in a pond with green algae. That's what you wanted to touch on today, right? Right, right. How do you know if your dog likes to swim and goes swimming in your pond? How do you know if it's safe or not? Well, the discouraging thing is you don't. Because the <clears throat> the blue-green algae, is it's really a bacteria. And it doesn't always produce blue-green pigment. And it can float on the surface of the water or it can be underneath or it can be covered up by other algae. And so it's hard to know whether the, the water is safe or not. Just because there is algae in the water, though, does not mean that it's poisonous, correct? No, right. It, it does not mean that. So a lot of algae is very helpful. So how do you know and what do you recommend for people who have dogs that like to swim in ponds? Well, <clears throat> when the, the cyanobacteria that's called blue-green algae produces its toxin, it's usually in warm weather and it's usually because it gets an, an excess of nutrients. And those nutrients are uh, nitrates that they get from fertilizer. So mm -hmm. if you have fertilizer runoff into a pond or a lake, then the risk of blue-green algae poisoning is a lot higher. But if you have a pond or a lake that does not have runoff from fertilizer, then you should be okay. You will be more likely to be okay. But there is no guarantee. No, there's no guarantee and there's no easy test. I mean, it would be nice if you could go down to your pond and, you know, with a test tube and put a tablet in it and find out whether the poison was there, but you can't. So what do you recommend then well, to dog don't, owner? Don't let dogs swim in uh, stagnant water in warm weather. In stagnant, and you are you considering a pond stagnant water? Yes, if it's not if it's not moving rapidly um, or not moving at all, then there's some risk in warm weather, and the the incidence has actually been increasing because of the uh, global warming. So the the warm weather, the overuse of fertilizers, and also uh, water that gets contaminated by phosphorus, which is in a lot of household cleansers, uh, also has a, a more rapid growth. It's called a algae bloom. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Now, the bottom line here should be then, if you care about your dogs, you're not sure about uh, your pond, don't let them swim in it. Right, because you know the water doesn't have to stink. Sometimes it does, and dogs like it even better. Then. Yeah. <laughs> and they dork, dogs don't have to drink the water either they because to, they'll get it on their hair coat and they'll lick it off their hair coat. So is there a place they can go for more information on this? Uh, well, the CDC has a really good handout for it, so they can Google the CDC for um, blue-green algae. Okay. Uh, the Missouri Department, uh, Natural Department. The, the Missouri it? Department of Natural Resources. Yes, right, right, right. Okay. Uh, they also have some good handouts. Okay, on so it. you can Google either one of those. Correct. And correct. just to be on the safe side, keep your dog out of the ponds. Right. All right. Dr. C.B. Chastain, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Paul. By. Okay, now I want to introduce you to Elizabeth Palmieri, Greenhouse Theater Project. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me, Paul. So what is your project this time? Yes, upcoming we have um, the classic Hedda Gabler, which a lot of people probably have not heard about unless you're an Ibsen fan of theater. But um, So this piece was written over 100 years ago. However, Greenhouse has updated it. Um, Hedda Gabler. Hedda Gabler. The updated version according to uh, <laughs> according to Greenhouse Theater Project. Right. And you know what she told me? Now, usually you do these, uh, you do your theater at unusual site specific yeah, yeah. non non traditional theatrical right. you're spaces. doing this one at the missouri theater i know we're going against everything that we are founded in and we are performing in the missouri theater which is actually kind of a big deal and it's kind of um a bit of a dream for us only because the way in which we are using the space is how did unique. you land the missouri theater 
very, very carefully. <laughs> um, you know what? This this is uh, this piece that we're doing is probably the most um, challenging piece that Greenhouse has taken on in a lot of different ways. Um, it's the most uh, expensive work that we are doing. Um, and we I really wanted that space. I'd been thinking about the Missouri Theater for a long time for this space, uh, mainly because uh, the audience is actually going to be on the stage, seated with us, with the actors on the stage. Oh, so you are using the stage. I am using, we are using the stage, but um, the inspiration came from uh, the 1,100 empty seats kind of staring back at us as this this empty void, if you will. So it was an artistic choice um, in, in selecting that venue. So how many people will you have in the audience on stage? We will be able to seat 90. 90 people. 90 people. On the stage. On the stage. Mm -hmm. You'll be doing the production on the stage, and then you look out at the auditorium, and there's 1,100 empty seats there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that part of it. Yep. Yep. If you've come to a greenhouse show, you know, we're usually pretty intimate. You know what I mean? Our, our spaces are a little bit tighter and the action is happening, you know, right there, right in front of you or around you sometimes. Will you have sets or will it be a bare stage? Um, no comment. I don't want to give any of these secrets away because it's uh, you have to come see it. It's it's definitely going to be a show that is um, it's going to be like nothing you've seen us do before. I'm sure. I brought in um, a couple guest artists for this show. Um, director Matt Tricano, uh, he lives in New York. He's an old friend of mine, and um, he's just a fantastic director who's been pulling out all of these new methods and ideas and working us incredibly hard. He's actually in rehearsal right now. He was going to come with me this morning, but we've been rehearsing. Are you rehearsing at the Missouri Theater? Not yet. No, we're in our studio, but we rehearse in the mornings and in the evenings, okay. and it's it's. it's an intense schedule. All right. So here's the thing. If you have ever wanted to be on stage at the Missouri Theater yourself. Yeah. Right. Now, if you if you get tickets for the Greenhouse Theater project, you're on stage. You at can the Missouri say that Theater. you were on stage at the Missouri <laughs> Theater. And it is I mean, it is one of the most gorgeous spaces. It you is. know, it's um, I mean, I find the beauty in it, even in, you know, the back stairwells. There's just there's just something really incredible about a, a, an old historic space like yeah. that. All right. So you're running a Greenhouse Theater Project at the Missouri Theater. At when? the Missouri Theater. It runs September 6th through the 9th. We have four performances only and two performances on Sunday, the uh, 8th. I think it's the 8th, not the 9th. And the 2.30 and 7.30. But all the other performances are at 7.30. You can get your tickets online. Okay. At Greenhouse Theater Project. Project. It's greenhousetp.org. Greenhousetp.org. Elizabeth Brunton Palmieri, thank you so much. Thank you for so much, by. Paul. Bye bye.